Hello there, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. It means so much to see people watching my content and really enjoying it or leaving their feedback for me down below. I really appreciate it, so thank you for being here. If you like what you see, go ahead and thumbs up the video and subscribe down below if you'd like to see more content from me. Today we're gonna to be trying out a ton of new drugstore makeup. Some things I've tried before a little bit and I'm still kind of making up my mind on and some things are brand new, first impressions, fresh, off the press <laughs> makeup items. So this is what the look turned out to be. It's just sort of like a monochromatic, nude, bronzy kind of look, and I really like it, even though there's a couple things in here that I did not like so much, and you will see that in just a minute. So just keep on watching if you wanna see how I got this look and how I feel about all the products we're gonna try out today. Thank you again for being here, and let's get into it. I don't have a mirror. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, we're just gonna jump right in and get started. I'm just filling in my brows with the L'Oreal Paris Brow Stylist Definer. I've been really liking this brow pencil lately. It's one of those really fine tipped pencils and the color range is really nice. It goes on well and it actually lasts really well throughout the day, whereas some products can kind of slip and slide around, especially the cheaper ones from the drugstore. This one actually stays put and lasts a really long time. Okay, that's where we're gonna stop for right now. I'll probably touch them up a little bit after I finish everything else at the end, but better than they were. <laughs> we're gonna start with the eyes today, so I'm gonna clean up the brows and prime the lids using the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. And this is a fairly new product, but I have mentioned this in other videos, I think. And then we'll just set that with my Maybelline Fit Me Powder in Fair. This is a newer concealer, but I have tried it before, and I think I featured it in a video. If I have, I will link that down below so you can see it. I really like it. It gives off a nice matte finish and a smooth base, especially for eyeshadow. I do have a different concealer from the drugstore that we're gonna use on the face today. I just wanted to use this so that the first time that I try out the other concealer will be on my face and not on my eyes. For eyeshadow today, we're gonna be playing around a little bit with this Profusion palette. This is the Chocolates palette. It's a 21 shade eyeshadow palette, and it came with a little brush as well, which is not in here right now. But this is what it looks like. It's beautiful kind of golden tones, and then some green kind of teal shades as well. And a couple transitions, but mostly shimmers and metallics. I had heard really good things about Profusion eyeshadows from a couple different people, especially here on YouTube, people that I trust and have watched tons of their videos and reviews, and they said they really liked Profusion eyeshadows. Now, I've never seen anyone use this palette specifically, but everyone says that they really like these eyeshadows, and when I saw this palette, it reminded me a lot of the Natasha Denona, like the Golds palette or whatever, which those are over $100, and this was $10. So I saw the similar shades and kind of thought this would be really wearable and kind of fun, so I wanted to try it out. I have used it a few times, and I cannot decide how I feel about it, so I really wanted to use it again. Some of the shades seem really nice, like the transitions are all fine, but a couple of the shimmers and metallics that I've used don't have a ton of pigment, so I want to play around with as many shades as I can today. We're going for kind of a monochromatic brown, bronzy look, so we will see how that goes. This is the brush that the palette came with. It is extremely nice. I really like this brush. I used this in my review for the BH Cosmetics Opalescent Palette, which I will link down below because that palette was incredible. Um, and this brush worked really well with that. So I'm gonna try to start using this brush today. And looking in, there's not a ton of transition shades. These are kind of the only transition shades that you have here. Um, and one is a little more pinky and one is more of a, you know, neutral mustard tone kind of brown. I think we'll go in with this shade right here today. So this is the shade Adventurous. Really gonna dip in there and then I'm just gonna use this as my transition. We'll see how this goes. Oh, my hair is driving me crazy. That actually looks really good. I feel like last time I used this, I wasn't seeing that much payoff. Um, the mattes were fine, like I said, but this is looking better today. And if you've watched my 
review on the BH Cosmetics palette that I just posted, you'll notice that I had sort of an issue with the mattes at first, and then I actually picked up this brush and used it, and it helped solve a lot of those issues. Sometimes you just have to find the right tools to use with specific products so that you can get them to work a little bit better. So the only thing we have to really deepen up the lid is this shade right here. So I'm going to go in with that right now. This is the shade Groovy. And I'm going to start focusing this close to the lash line on the outer corner over here. And it's kind of stamping it in at first. After all the pigment has, is mostly off my brush, I'm going to sort of sweep this into the crease as well, sort of deepening things up, up there. It's blending out fairly well. I'm just going to switch brushes now and really try to pack the pigment into these little folds that I have and make sure that the pigment is nice and even. Then going back on with our first brush, I'm just going to sweep over the edges of everything, making sure we didn't lose any of that transition shade. That's looking pretty good. Like I said before, I didn't really have too much of an issue with the matte shades, other than the fact that there just aren't very many in the palette. There's only just a couple right here, and that's about it. But they all blended really well. The only thing I did have issues with was some of the shimmers that I've tried so far just are not the most pigmented. Let's see if I can remember which ones. So like the shade Winner right here. I've picked that up on my finger a couple times now and really tried to layer it up. And I know it's a light shade. I get that. But it's just not very, it's not very opaque. And when things aren't very opaque, I expect them to at least be really glittery but it's really not that either. It's um, this shade right here. It just is sort of like nothing, which I mean, you can, I mean, it's fine, but it doesn't seem like too much to me. And then the shade right next to it, Tango, is kind of chalky, to be honest. And yeah, not my favorite thing either. I don't know if you can really like tell. It just does not give the right pow effect. But we'll try some of the other shades out today and see how they go. I use all shimmer shades with my finger. I just feel like with everything that I've tried, that just that just seems to work the best. So I'm going to do that again and see how it goes. I kind of want to try the shade Focus right out here, and I'll tap that on with my finger. This is pretty. This reminds me of like a penny color. Okay, this one's nice. If you like these tones, I think this will be a good palette for you as long as you're okay with, you know, maybe having to dip into some other transition shades because there aren't that many. And if you're okay with the fact that some of the shimmers just might not be as pigmented and like pow as you want, but some of them are really good. Like this focus one is really nice. We're going to layer some more things on top to see if I can get anything else to look really good too. Uh, but the palette is only $10. There's 21 shades, so, so even if some of them aren't the best, I feel like that still gives you a lot to work with. Let's layer Solstice on the center. Okay, this isn't doing too much, but these are very similar shades, so that's to be expected. This shade feels a lot more creamy, though, than some of the other ones. Oh, I can see it, actually. That's a good one. These two shades are good. I think it's just those, maybe just those two then that I tried that I didn't really like. There's lots of different textures within all these shimmer shades. So these ones are a little bit more, these ones are more like shimmery metallic along with like these ones right here. But then there's these two here. I don't know if you can see and like this shade and this shade that are a little bit more of a chunky glittery texture. So I'm going to try to pick one of those and put that on top. Let's try Glory, this shade, next to the others. Pop that on. Oh, that's really pretty, actually, too. To be honest, though, a lot of these shades are, like, really similar. Like, these three are all pretty similar. I didn't notice a huge difference when I started to layer them up on my eyelid. And, like, these two are really similar. These two are really similar. So, I don't know. It's kind of a weird setup. However, they're all really wearable, and the ones that I've used so far are really nice. Maybe it's just these two then that I don't really enjoy that much. 
So if you like these kinds of colors and are looking for a palette like this, it's $10. You might as well give it a shot. I'm going to stop there on the eyes for just a minute. We will do some things on the lower lash line as well, but I kind of want to go to the face and then come back. For our foundation today, we're going to be using the L'Oreal Infallible Longwear Shaping Stick Foundation. I tried this once before and it seemed really nice. I feel like all the L'Oreal Infallible line products lately that they've been releasing have been super good. The um, Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation is fantastic. The Full Wear Concealer, like Infallible Full Wear Concealer, whatever that is, is really good too. Uh, I tried it once, like I said, and I kind of want to try it again. So we are going to try this out today. I'm just gonna put a couple stripes on my face and see how it goes. This shade match is pretty good for me. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. This is 401 Ivory, and I'll also take it under my jaw and down my neck a little because it's not the perfect shade. Okay, I'm just gonna work on one side at a time, and then I'm gonna blend it out with a dense Kabuki brush. It actually blends out really easily. Normally, stick foundations can be a little bit tricky to blend out. I feel like it's giving me like a nice smooth finish. It's a little bit more of like a medium coverage, I would say. But I'm gonna work across the rest of the face and see if we can build it up anywhere. This is looking really good. It's more of like a creamy finish, not necessarily matte, but not super dewy either. That looks good. Let's try to build it up just here. Let's see, and I'm just sort of going to dab this so that we don't lift off any coverage. I feel like that did build up a little bit actually. Let's try a little bit with a sponge. The sponge is really nice too. This is also a new newer beauty product. Um, it's from e.l.f. It's, I'll have to look up which one it is, but it's the pink one that's shaped as the Real Techniques one. It says you can use it wet or dry, which I actually have used it dry, and it surprisingly works pretty well. I prefer it wet still. Skin's looking good. I'll probably just kind of conceal a couple of these little spots right here. But it looks nice. It does look a little heavy, I would say. I don't know if you can really tell. It looks a little heavy. I always have a problem with the foundation sticking around my nose, but we'll conceal to help kind of blend all that in. And for concealer, I found an Essence concealer that I had never seen before. I've never really shopped too much from Essence, so I'm excited to try this because I got their blush a couple months ago, which I have in a video as well, so I'll link that down below and I loved it and they're so affordable and I've heard some good things about some other products so I wanted to try this one. This is the Essence Camouflage Plus Matte Concealer. It says it's waterproof and tattoo covering. I have not used this yet. We are going to try this under the eyes and see how it goes. This is a pretty light shade so I don't know how this is going to look. Here is what the applicator looks like. It's like a double-sided doe foot. The color actually looks pretty good. Let's just do one side at a time. It's a lot runnier than I expected. I feel like all these matte concealers that have been coming out have been really thick. And this one's not... Whoa. Is that just me or is that blue? What is happening? Hmm. This shade looked really good and now it looks really weird. It literally looks blue when I blend it out. Maybe it's just a little light. It's not the most full coverage thing I've ever seen. It's also not the most matte. Um, like the e.l.f. camo concealer is a lot more matte than this. You can see that there's a little bit of shine still, but you can also see that it's not It's not the most full coverage. But look how weird, because it's very yellow looking. And then when you blend it, it turns literally blue. We're just going to put this all over to make sure that the colors on my face look cohesive together. I never want one area to be like super bright and then the rest of my face to just be one flat color because if you leave just that concealer right under your eye like that, 
it will look very out of place. But if you kind of move it to other areas of your space as well, it will look a lot more cohesive and natural and it will blend in better. It's so weird how it gets lighter when you blend it out. Normally things oxidize and get darker, but this I feel like lightens up like crazy. I'm just gonna set the under eyes because they are already creasing like crazy with my Maybelline Fit Me powder. I feel like it creased no matter what. Like I blended up as much as I could and I feel like it already like it like lifted out of my creases. Can you see that? I like that this isn't super super thick and creamy and it's not crazy crazy drying matte so we'll see how it wears but it is kind of lifting out of those little creases under my eyes already and i really really spent some time to try to blend that out but we will see i picked up a cream blush that i am super excited about this is the blush bomb from flower beauty in the shade pinched so here is the package it comes in i think it's about ten dollars so here's what it looks like then you unscrew the cap and I think you just squeeze some out. So how I'm going to do it is I'm going to squeeze it onto the back of my hand. And I'll pick some up with my sponge just evenly on the back and really work it into my sponge. So I'm really picking up all of it. And then I will gently start to press that on. Okay, it's looking really, really sheer. So maybe I'll do a little bit with my fingertips. So here's what it looks like. And if you blend it out, it is actually kind of sheer, which is nice because you don't want to get too much pigment on your cheeks all at once. Wow, and it's such a pretty kind of kind of creamy satiny finish. I'm just taking two fingers and I'm sort of gently patting. Oh, these are so pretty. Oh my gosh. This looks so natural. I've never really used too much cream blush, but oh my gosh, this looks so natural. I love it. Mm, this is so cute. Okay, and then I will just kind of smooth over everything really gently with my sponge. So it just looks super, super natural. I love it. I am going to go ahead and set this with a powder blush, even though it makes me so sad to do it. I've been trying out this powder blush from Catrice. This is their blush box in the shade Bronze. And I've tried this out a few times. Every time I've tried it out, it seems to wear off a little bit quicker than some of my other blushes, like my Ulta Beauty blush that I love. And my Essence blush is actually really, really nice and lasts a super long time on the cheeks. So I wanted to try this over top of the cream just to see if that base helps it to last any longer. And I feel like these shades will be really complimentary. Wow, this is super matte, especially compared to my other cheek. Yeah, but I'm, I don't think I would recommend these, but we'll see how long this lasts. And then if you like the shades and you wear it over top of a cream blush and it lasts long, it might be something worth your time. Um, it definitely mattified everything, which I'm kind of sad about because I loved that cream finish, but that's okay. I don't have a new highlighter, so I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. highlighter, the one that's in white gold. I'll put the name down below. I finally found the actual name of it. I love this one because of the undertone. For fair skins, a lot of times you only find really cool toned highlighters. And it's also, it's bright, but it's not crazy streaky or pigmented or anything. I feel like I can really layer it up too and it just like looks so good. Okay, the product was really settling into the lines on my forehead, so I set it down with some powder, um, and it looks like it kind of like lifted it a little bit. You can see I look a little bit scaly on my forehead, and I don't have a ton of coverage at all. I know I didn't apply too much product to that area, but still, it sort of picked it up a little bit. Actually, I do have a new highlighter. I have the Wet n Wild Loose Highlighting Powder. This is in I'm So Lit. It's the lightest shade. I have used this once. It is extremely, extremely pigmented. Here's the mess that it creates inside. It's very blinding, so I'm going to take a fan brush, and I'm just barely, barely, barely going to get anything. And I'm going to hit just the highest points right here. It's like so much. Holy cow. So if you really like blinding highlights, this would probably be your jam. Not my vibe for most days because I feel like it looks very noticeable, 
but I thought I would just show you what it does look like. But it gives you that wet metallic skin look for sure. For bronzer, I'm going to use the Milani Silky Matte Bronzing Powder in Sunlight. I love this shade. It sort of bronzes and contours at the same time. I think I have this in more videos as well. So we don't need to linger on this for too long, but I'm just gonna go around the perimeters of my face with this. The concealer's still creasing like crazy. Hopefully you can see it a little bit. Um, I don't think I like it. I'm just gonna use the same matte transitions that we used on the upper lash line for my lower and just connect everything up into the outer corner. And I'll take this time too to deepen up the outer corner just a little bit with that same shade we were using before. Groovy. I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Loose Highlighting Powder for my inner corner. I think this is a perfect use for something so like bright. Sometimes I get highlighters that I think are too, too blinding for my face, but I love them on the inner corner. Like this looks incredible on the inner corner. I'm gonna set my skin today with the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Long Lasting Setting Spray. This is a matte finish and it has the most beautiful mist. You can't even see it. Oh, it's so nice. The one thing I have noticed is if you try to do it too quickly without pressing the nozzle down all the way, it can splurt little droplets at you. So just press the button down all the way and go kind of slow. That's the way to get the best application with this. And then I'll just pounce over everything even though I do not need to do this because there are no droplets on my skin, I already know. I still like to just kind of press everything in. For mascara, I've been loving the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. Holy cow, this gives you thickness, length, everything, and I think it's amazing. It is sort of a wet formula, and it smells so bad, okay? Well, it's not even bad, it smells like mascara. Like, if you smell this, you'll know. This smells like mascara, which I can't even explain. Ooh, it is so strong. The smell is so, so strong, and I feel like I can smell it throughout the day. So if you're sensitive to smells, or you don't like the smell of mascara, do not get this. But I have been loving it, so I'm just gonna put that on. And I'll do like a light coat just to make sure everything is combed through even and separated. Not worrying about volume too much. Just like that. And then I'll switch over and do the bottom. That gives the top lashes a little bit of a time to dry, but they still the formula is still a little bit tacky. So when I go back in with a second layer, it will build up nicely, but it won't get clumpy. So this is when I really start to wiggle my brush through and I go all the way from root to tip. That's just two coats right there. My eyelashes look beautiful. I'll probably just do like one more. I haven't dipped back into the tube either. I just sort of do it with one dip back in. And then I'll touch up the bottom lashes one more time. So there's the difference. You can really see. I'll just do the other eye and we'll be right back. All right, mascara's on both eyes. Come in close, see, it makes a bit of a mess too. That's one thing you gotta note, but I think it's beautiful. If you can handle the smell and you don't mind a little bit of a messy, like liquidy formula, it's great. Only thing we have left is lips. I don't have a new lip liner, but I have a new shade of a lip liner that I already love. You guys know that I love the LA Girl Ultimate these, this is the longest title. LA Girl Ultimate Intense Stay Auto Line, Lip, wait. LA Girl Ultimate Lip Intense Stay Auto Liner. I love these so much. I have the shade Nonstop Nude already and I feel like it goes with a lot of my different nude shades. Darker, lighter, and it's just the perfect shade for even to just like fill in and not put anything else on your lips. Nonstop Nude is beautiful. I got a little bit of a deeper shade to kind of try some like lip contouring. So this is the um, LA Girl Lip Liner in Keep It Spicy. There's Keep It Spicy. And then I'm gonna show it to you next to Nonstop Nude, which is a little bit more light. 
So I'm going to start with non-stop nude and I'm just going to outline my lips like normal. I'll overline them just a tiny bit on the top lip, but nothing too crazy, just outlining them. I'll fill in just the edges a tiny bit. And then I'm going to use the shade Keep It Spicy just on the outer edges of my lip. This will make this, those areas be pulled back a little bit and make the centers of my lip look pushed forward so they look more plump. Let's try it. I've never really tried this before. And stop it about halfway in. Now I'm going in with a new lip product. This is from Alme, surprisingly. I've heard that these are really nice and I've never tried anything from Alme ever. But these were super cute. So this is their hashtag lip vibes. They have a ton of different colors of these. Look how cute this little package is. So this is in the shade Go Wild. And this is a matte finish. They have a matte and then like a cream. But even this matte is not super matte. Like it still has a sheen to it and it's not crazy opaque. Mm, it smells really good. Just pressing this in the center of my lips. Dab together and then blend it with my finger. It's not the perfect ombre sort of lip ever, but I feel like I did pretty good. It just kind of makes the inside of the lips look a little bit more pouty. I'll kind of have to play around with that technique and see if I can get it to work even better. But you can definitely see the gradient, and I really like that. And this color is really nice. It feels super comfortable. It's more opaque than I expected too, but I like that it's not like super, super matte because my lips do get really dry and cracked as you can see right now most of the time. One more lip product and we're all done. I picked up this Essence Gloss. This is the Shine 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 Wet Look Lip Gloss in the shade Bright On. Packaging looks like this. These are gorgeous. I'm super excited about this. Oh, it like... It's like bright, but it's kind of dark and bronzy at the same time. I love this. Plus, it smells like so good. I cannot figure out what it is, but it smells like something from my childhood. I just... Like identical to something from my childhood. So if you can just smell this and please somebody tell me what the heck this is, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> oh... It glides on smooth. It's a little bit of a thick kind of formula. The doe foot picks up a lot of product, but I love the feel and I love the look. Mm, it's so pretty. I think that's everything. I'm going to give you my thoughts on everything really quick and we'll wrap up. And all the product names will be listed down below in the description bar. So if you forget what anything is, you can check down there for that. You already know I love this brow pencil. I feel like it lasts all day. The color selection is really great and it's a that nice skinny tip plus it does have a spoolie on the other side. This eyeshadow palette, eh, I think there might be better from the drugstore but for 21 shades for $10 this is a pretty good deal. All wearable colors, there's just some that seem really similar to me but I, again I, I do like the look that I came up with and I do feel like the mattes blend really well and I like it. I don't wouldn't say you need it, but if you love these tones and you only have about $10 to spend, this does get you a lot of shades. This mascara is wonderful. It smells awful and it gets all over my eyelids, but it's great. The stick foundation I like. I don't think I love it and I have some foundations right now that I love. So I don't know if I would recommend it. It does have a nice finish. It built up nicely. It blended out really easily, but I don't know. There's nothing like wowing me about it. I don't like this, I decided. I thought I might because it was a thin formula, matte, and like full coverage, but you can see I set my under eye creases with the normal powder that I always use and it's already creasing like crazy. And I don't feel like this would actually cover a tattoo. I don't have a tattoo to test it on, but it says tattoo covering and I just don't, I don't believe it. I don't really like this. This is like $4 and the e.l.f. one's like five, just get the e.l.f. one. This blush is beautiful. I want to go get a million more and I want to wear them with just like on a no makeup kind of day and just do concealer, brows, and this. Oh, because this gives you the nicest like creamy skin like dewy finish and I absolutely love it. I think there's better blushes from the drugstore to be honest because this doesn't really last all that long on me. The color is really nice. That bronzy kind of look is really pretty. Uh, eh. There's nothing I hate really but there's things that I just like wasn't insanely in love with. Like... When I tried the Essence blushes, I was amazed how long those lasted and how well they went on. Um, and this, I just don't think 
last that long mostly. I'm just not that excited about it, but it's not bad. You guys know I love this highlighter and I love this bronzer. These were not new. The Wet n Wild highlight. If you like really blinding metallic highlights, then you will probably love this. Not my vibe necessarily, but I will use it on the inner corners or on days where like I'm going out and about, which is rarely, never mostly. I love this setting spray so much. The mister is amazing and it leaves a nice finish on the skin. I feel like I need to mention this sponge as well because this thing is so great. It gets so big and so soft and I just feel like it blends things really well. So if you need a good sponge, this one from e.l.f. is fantastic. There's another pink one that's like that um, more bell shape. Get this one in this shape, not the other one. They are different sponges. This one is the best. I'll write the name down below. You already know I love the LA Girl lip liners. If you need lip liners, these are great. And these are really good neutrals for lining your lips with other nude colors, the non-stop nude and keep it spicy. So these ones are great. I like this. I'm gonna have to wear it on its own to see, but so far, I mean, I love the color so much in Go Wild and I like the finish and everything. And then this gloss is freaking beautiful. I really want to get more shades because this does leave you with like a wet look. It has glitter in it a little bit, but it's nothing you can feel and it's nothing that really even shows. It just gives that like really nice shine to the lips. So that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you've tried any of these products or you have other products you want me to try, please let me know. I love talking about makeup and I have nothing to gain from this other than the fact that I love makeup and it's so fun to try it all out and talk about it and connect with people about makeup. So let me know of other things you want to see down below as well and thank you so so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more content and I hope that I see you next time. Thanks. Bye!